Now we're hearing more and more these days about facial and fingerprint recognition. The reliability of such technologies has proven patchy, but now researchers at the Department of Computer Science are hoping to change all that. Yes, I'm with the Signal and Image Processing Group here in the Computer Sciences Department. Uh, Abir is going to tell us all about fingerprint recognition. Hello. How does this system work? Well, uh, we can just show a very quick demonstration, if you don't mind. Uh, we've got here a very typical fingerprint scanner. The first stage of any, any um, fingerprint matching system is enrolment, and this will, this will get your fingerprint onto the template database. So shall I enrol? Yeah, if you'd like to do that. So uh, I'll click the buttons. OK, uh, we need to enter your name. Powell. OK, now if you want to hold your finger down then, you'll see the fingerprint image come up on there. And then when we're done, we just click. And you'll put it down again. OK. Yeah, we need more than one impression. Uh, th this helps us make the, the, the system more accurate. Do you want to take another impression? Thank you. Now, that, that your, your fingerprints are now in the database, um, and you're going to have to imagine that you've come along to some sort of access control system or during immigration, and we don't know who you are, and we'll ask you to put your fingerprint, finger, finger, uh, finger down on the scanner again, take a fingerprint, uh, and we'll see whether we can identify you without knowing who you are. So this is the matching stage. Okay, same finger. There we go. Thank you. Now it's going running through the database, trying to find uh, the closest match. There we go. And it's You're found here. it. Yep, found. found. With a score of 65, what does that mean? Uh, well, that's, it's hard to interpret. I mean, it's sort of like out of 100, but it's a, it's a confidence score, really, saying how, how close that is against what the other prints that it's found in the database. Uh, and anything about 50 is, is very good. Now, this technology has lots of other applications, Li Wang. You work with Abir on this. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the technology can be used on both PC-based system or this embedded system. With this system, it's doing the matching and recognition completely independent of any PC. Any computing, uh, uh, any computing is done on this device. And how does it work? So what it, it's very simple. It's a door entry system. You, you register yourself first. For example, I've already registered my index finger. So if I place my finger here. Thank you. When you, when, you, when you hear the click and the sound thank you, it means this per person is recognized and the, this box will link to a controller of the door and the door will be opened once that person now is recognized. So that can be used for attendance management or access control and it also open, opens up the pro, uh, possibility to use fingerprint in any portable device such as PDAs or mobile phones. So what's the advantage of biometric testing as opposed to you know, the, the sort of conventional swipe card system? Right. The conventional swipe card is something you have. Um, it can be lost, it can be stolen, it can be borrowed. So certainly jeopard a lot of the cases what the security will be jeopardized if you lost or st if if you lost your card or the card gets stolen. For the PIN number or password is something you know and for example the uh, the uh, application to financial transactions people tend to have multiple cards and, but they tend to use the same password. So if you lost one card, the, the whole security gets jeopardized. Whereas biometric is something you are. It can't, it can't be lost and it can't be stolen, generally. So it's, it provides more security uh, uh, compared to the conventional uh, technology. You call this the warp system. Why is that? Well, uh, one of the big challenge of biometric recognition system is the geometric variation. It happens in fingerprint, it happens in face recognition. Uh, the geometric data can be distorted. For example, fingerprint, it depends on how much pressure you apply them finger, uh, on, the, on the scanner and it depends on the angle of your fingerprint uh, opposed to the scanner. It can create a very complicated distortion. And those distortions sometimes can make the recognition system uh, difficult to recognize or even uh, make false rejection or false acceptance. So what we're trying to do is come up with a mathematical model to correct those distortions and to make it geometric invariant, i.e. every time you present the same fingerprint or indeed your same biometric data, you always generate the same information or image regardless of the viewing angle or the pressure you apply on the, on the fingerprint. But perhaps even more so than with fingerprint technology, there is a margin for error. 
Well, yes, especially with uh, you know, face recognition, there's also a lot of variation between images of the same person. These can be due to not just facial expression changes or hairstyle or glasses, but also there's differences in the lighting and the actual direction the image was taken from. So what's your challenge? Well, current systems expect um, a frontal image, neutral lighting and neutral expression. Our approach is trying to overcome these problems to make it more usable in a natural environment, such as images from CCTV and those kind of situations. So just give us a very brief demonstration of how it works. Well, I can't show you the uh, face recognition, but a brief demonstration of um, detection, which is one of the initial stages you require. Ah. And... Right. Well, they're definitely criminals. <laughs> yes. Well, this uh, project has just started in the last few weeks. The funding lasts for another three years, so no doubt we'll be hearing more about it on future editions of Warwick Icast. Thank you.